meant to reduce the armaments, and most countries agreed to it. Remember, they came up with a ratio, uh, a 55311 ratio, where America and Great Britain were the fives, and the three was Japan, and Italy and France were the ones. And these nations would not build out of that ratio. So for every five tons of ship that America and Great Britain built, Japan could build three tons, and France and Italy would build one ton. And it helps control spending on this, too, because nations like France and Italy realize that they're top-tier nations in the world, but they're not on the level with Great Britain and uh, the United States, and they're not even on the level with Japan. And remember, this is another instance where Japan felt like they got insulted by European nations and the United States. They're kind of raw about this. All right. We also mentioned the Dawes Plan, where America... Uh, loans money to Germany so they can pay back war debts and essentially, essentially Great Britain and France can pay back the loans that they uh, essentially got, in, uh, got from the United States in World War I as well. Right? And that's where we left off. Okay? And what we're getting into now, the United States in the 20s also starts putting quotas on immigration. All right? America starts to limit the number of people who come into this country. All right? Why would we limit the number of people who are coming into the country? Comparing to the large amount coming in. There is a large amount coming in, but that's not just it. Okay? What is it, Aiden? Xenophobia. Xenophobia. It's a great word. What does xenophobia mean? Fear of other foreigners in general. Okay? And there is a serious anti immigrant. Uh, uh, mindset that is in the United States. Okay, and I don't don't know why Siri wants to record that. All right? There's a serious anti-immigrant nature uh, among the people there. People dislike immigrants. Okay? They dislike immigrants. Why do they dislike immigrants? <laughs> Obviously that's one of them. All right, number 1, they were worried about their jobs. Okay? People were worried about jobs. Remember now, middle class people uh, or people started to get access to real factory jobs uh, like working at Henry Ford's automotive factory where they could make decent money and have a decent standard of living and afford nice things. All right? And so they're more protective of their jobs. But it's not just a desire for jobs. It goes beyond that. Most people who come from other countries, why are, what's different about them other than the fact that what they look like? They speak different languages, okay? A lot of the immigrants who came to the United States come from vastly different cultures with vastly different languages, right? Let's talk about some of those, okay? Remember, we like immigrants who come from, uh, who come from places like Great Britain or even France, Western Europe, places that are similar to us in culture, in the way that they live, the religion that they have. They're more similar to the United States, and usually... Western European countries, a lot of them are multilingual, and English is one of their languages. So if they come to America, they fit in pretty decently. All right? But we didn't like certain groups of people. South and Eastern Europe, those immigrants start to become radically different. Okay? Uh, my great-grandparents on my dad's side are, came from Italy. Came over here, they knew no English at all. They never even learned any English. They were kind of slow to assimilate. Didn't have any education. Right? They were manual laborers. Worked in coal mines. Okay? Their culture starts to get a little bit different. Okay? Out west in California, what groups immigrated to that region of our country? Chinese. Chinese and who else? Japanese. Japanese. Chinese and Japanese immigrants are radically different. Okay? At least Europeans, you're like, well, the Italians and the Irish are kind of strange. Uh, the Irish, they like their potatoes. Okay, but who doesn't, seriously? All right? At least we can identify with them to some degree. Okay? But when the Japanese and the Chinese move out west, uh, and, start, and the Chinese have been there for some time, but when a lot of the Japanese start coming uh, and Chinese start coming, there's a serious issue. Because not only do they look different, but their language is radically different. Okay? And their culture is different, the food they eat, their religion, or lack thereof, right? And Americans 
can sometimes be pretty racist towards groups that they don't understand. In fact, it's probably a true thing in general that we always fear what we don't understand. Because your whole life you live one way, and then there's somebody who lives completely opposite of you. Right? There's a serious anti-immigrant bias in the United States. Okay? Now, part of that, okay, part of that anti-immigrant bias leads to something called the eugenics movement. Ooh, this is such fun. Right? Does anybody know what the eugenics movement is? Give me uh, your best guess, Parker. The whole you're trying to control what they put in these hip hop breeds and hope you have the same thing your own culture. You're on the right track with that. Eugenics is a movement to weed out the bad genes in society. Eugenics is a movement where we want to try to weed out the bad genes. Ooh. Now, there are some interesting little baseline ways that people believe. Uh, that people in the eugenics movement believe that you should try to weed out bad genes. What would be one way to weed out the bad genes, Gwendolyn? Birth control. Well, sterilization. You're getting into the deep end yet. Think simpler. Uh, chemo or like further involvement. You're on. You're getting too far ahead. You're already thinking the radical stuff. First of all, what's the best way to make sure that uh, if I have a, let's say I have a daughter, okay? And let's say I, she's a very intelligent daughter and very good looking, and uh, I want her to marry a good looking uh, who? A man who not only is good looking, but also is what? White. What is it? White. Probably so. If you're in the eugenics movement, you want somebody of similar racial makeup who was what else? Wealthy. Wealthy, smart, somebody who comes from good stock. Okay? And literally, people are like, hey, number one, they encourage marriage. Smart people get married to smart people. All right? So y'all make sure you marry smart people, okay? And attractive people, too, so we can have all the pretty babies. Now, that's really simple, okay? Now, another thing, too, okay? Uh, and this is a big issue. Uh, I don't, This is probably going to come to a shock to you, but how are babies made? Oh, uh, you know, it's funny you jokingly say, I don't know. But back in the 1920s and the early 20th century, there were a lot of people who didn't know. All right? So sex education is part of this as well. Okay? More openness talking about sex. Oh, man. Right? And you guys were like, well, that's not a problem in today's world. Ha, ha, ha. All right? You guys are too open with that. All right? But in that regard, they're like, hey, and this is a reality. A lot of people didn't know, and especially like because people were sheltered growing up, and particularly if you were a woman, you didn't know some of these things. Right? God, can you imagine that? Look, it's also not unheard of for like a lot of women didn't know what you were supposed to do on a wedding night. Like, oof, talk about a surprise. You get married off to some random six-year-old. Right? Come on in my bedroom. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. All right, it's strange stuff. Now, it gets even more bananas, too, okay? So you're like, oh, we encourage marriages to only families who have the right qualities that we want in a person. We start teaching about sex education. And for some people, Quinlan, what do we do to some people who weren't fit to breed? We sterilize. we sterilize them. Some people we sterilize against their will, okay? And you'd have rallies, eugenics rallies. And this picture, I'm sorry it's so grainy. Uh, but parts of it, like one of them says, I cannot read this sign, by what right should I have children? <laughs> All right? And there's one of them that's like, it's talking about alcoholism, or I've been in prison, like why should my kind should not have children? Okay? I don't know what happened, but when I put that in keynote from the internet, uh, it, it got grainier, and so I'm kind of bummed about that. But people believe in the eugenics movement said, hey, ultimately what we should do is we should help put good people with good people, and they can have children. And bad people, we don't want to have babies. Okay? We don't want them reproducing. We don't want dumb people reproducing in society. Oh. All right? I think it's better. Check this out here, too. They have little displays like this. And you see that on the left, they're like, hey, unfit human traits such as feeble-mindedness, epilepsy, criminality, insanity, alcoholism, pauperism, which is poverty, and many others run in families and are inherited in the same way as color in guinea pigs. If all marriages were eugenic, we could breed out most of the unfitness in three generations. 
They're like, if everybody just follows the guidelines, a la Jim Justice, what we could do is we could breed out all the unfitness. And they're like, look at that, the triangle of life. Your environment's what you have, your education is what you do, and what you are is your heritage. And it's really great. It says everything that you really are was decided when your parents were born because their genetic makeup is what determines what a person's going to be or not going to be. Wow. Certain people shouldn't be allowed to breed. We need to teach them about sex and how not to get pregnant. And then, on top of that, we don't want them to get pregnant or get married. Or at least if you're going to get married, you know, don't try to marry one of the smart people. I know, it sounds kind of cruel, doesn't it? Fun fact, uh, are certain things like criminality or pauperism, poverty, uh, are those things uh, are those things that are genetic? No. And that's one of the things you have to realize, that the eugenics movement is uh, also something that is not really based on solid science. Okay, you're like, who knew, right? Right, and so things like now, by the way, notice that they, they put this up here too, epilepsy, okay? Epilepsy, is that something that would deter you from marrying somebody that you loved? No, you can still marry them. You're like, oh, I have kids with them. I love them, okay? And we also learned that some of these things like epilepsy is controllable by med medication, right? We also learned that poverty is not something that is endemic or automatically inherent in somebody. Now, is it difficult to break cycles of poverty in generations? Yes. Right? And people said, look, this is not just good for uh, sense two. You could weed out all the bad genes. For example, they would be like, hey, somebody who has certain genetic diseases, uh, why would we want somebody, for example, with Down syndrome to reproduce? That's the idea behind the eugenics movement. Okay? And people who are mentally have low IQs, and I'm not saying this in a shocking way or anything like that, uh, but people even who have low IQs, do they still want to have sex? Yeah. yeah, they're still human beings. And a lot of them are going to have sex. And they're going to reproduce. Right? And so the eugenics movement uh, is trying to get rid of that. They're saying, look, if everybody just follows the guidelines, we could probably get these genes out of here. Now, something else is part of the eugenics movement, too, to discourage uh, bad genes from being passed on. Not only do they teach about sex ed, and not only do they encourage good marriages, but what do they encourage with unwanted pregnancies? Abortion. Abortion. Okay? Eugenics advocates would be like, hey, some babies are better off not being born. All right? And I'm not saying you have to believe that either. I'm just saying that's what the eugenics movement would do. All right? They also set up little displays like this. Okay? Some people are born to be a burden on the rest. Learn about heredity, or heredity, you can help correct these, uh, these conditions. And it says, this light flashes every 15 seconds. Every 15 seconds, uh, it says, or, excuse me, $100 of your money goes towards persons with bad hereditary, uh, the insane, the feeble-minded, the criminals, etc. Right? Uh, and they're saying that your money, all right? it's saying your money is going to support people who don't do anything, right? And so that's a problem, according to them. This light flashes every 48 seconds. Every 48 seconds, a person is born in the United States who will never grow up mentally beyond the stage of an eight-year-old boy or girl. That's not good, because every 48 seconds happens fast, right? This light flashes every 50 seconds. Every 50 seconds, a, a person is committed to jail in the United States. Very few normal persons ever go to jail. Is that true? No. Plenty of normal people go to jail, right? This light flashes every 16 seconds. Every 16 seconds, a person is born in the United States. Now, this one, this light only flashes once every seven and a half minutes, all right? That person is uh, somebody who will do creative work and will be help, uh, capable for leadership, and only 4% of Americans belong to that class of people. Ooh. Sounds like they're saying these are, there's only... 4% of the Americans who are really fit to pass on a lot of these genes, you know what I'm saying? And that there are a lot of these people who never get beyond the mental age of an 8-year-old. Right? What do they say is going to happen here eventually? The population, uh, imagine population of people as like a pyramid. And who's at the top of the pyramid? 
that 4%, which is a really low number. And at the bottom, you've got these people, and it makes up a large number of them. So basically, it's like all these super smart people are going to be working to support those mentally incompetent people. All right? And they're like, we've got to weed out the bad genes. Do you think this is like, I mean, okay to advocate for? But like our, in modern society, we we're like, we look at this and we're like, no, this is not a good idea. Right. Look, there were some people, not everybody, but some people in the eugenics movement who actually believed that you should take it a step further, that euthanasia was a good idea. What is euthanasia? Kill. You killed them. They thought some of these people would be better for them not to be alive. You would be putting them out of their misery. Oh, my gosh. Now, that wasn't the common thought in the eugenics movement, but they're like, it's an option. Who does this sound like, by the way? Hitler and the Nazis. Fun fact of the day, the Nazis get a lot of their racial ideas from the eugenics movement. Hitler looked at America and was like, America does it right. Look, they have that eugenics movement there. They want to weed out the bad genes. They realize that only a certain percentage of people are really fit, and they need to be at the top of the pyramid, so to speak. And it gets even better. Hitler said, you know what? Americans are smart. They segregate people by race over there. By the way, the eugenics movement and the, uh, the anti-immigration bias, uh, do you think that still existed towards black people in America, too? Absolutely. There were a lot of racial incidents in the 1920s uh, where you had riots occurring because black people started getting more incidents. Uh, they started growing in terms of their freedom. Uh, and uh, remember when we hear all this stuff about Confederate statues all over the place? Uh, Confederate statues, a lot of them got built in the 1920s uh, as a kind of as a reminder to black people in the South that white people are still in charge and they won't tolerate you not knowing your place, right? And that was the mentality in a lot of places. So you had this anti-immigrant bias, people don't like black people, and in terms of the eugenics movement, the white race was considered the one that has all the desirable qualities, right? So the eugenics movement is a real issue, all right? Now, so fun fact, too, one of the things they used to have, and I swear I'm not making this up, uh, you ever seen, like, a, a lot of children's pageants and things like that, where they have, like, little beauty pageants? Uh, some of those got their start in the eugenics movement. They used to have what were called fitter family contests, and you and your family would go down to, like, a local fair, and you would uh, you'd be judged on how fit you were and how good looking your family was and it's like oh these people have the best genes right and a certain percentage of the population buys into this that it's okay to sterilize people that we need to do x y and z in order to weed out the bad genes in society and like i said countries look at us like hitler and the nazis are like you know america's got really on track with that okay Ooh. now the eugenics movement Okay, here's the thing though. How did this idea get popular in the first place? Like, how did people just decide all of a sudden, eh, maybe we should try to weed out the bad genes? Uh, you're on the right track with that. We're going to look at that now. So, what I'm going to do is give you a nice little article here.